4. Vital Tips for Dog Owners Number 1. Vaccinate Your Dog Vaccination is important as it helps to prevent a range of diseases in dogs similar to humans. Therefore, ensure your pet gets all the regular vaccinations to protect them from common viruses and health issues. Number 2. Protect them from parasites. It is vital to safeguard your pet from all types of blood-sucking and flesh-eating parasites. Ticks and fleas can feast upon your dog's body if you are not careful. Therefore, pay attention to your pet's behavior and watch for unusual patterns like continuous scratching. Number 3. Schedule Regular Health Checkups. We advise you to take your dog once every six months to a vet for a health checkup. This can help to detect any health issues early and treat them quickly so your dog can live a long and happy life. On top of that, constantly watch your dog's behavior and notice any signs of ill health so you can get it treated swiftly. Number 4. Neuter or spay your dog. Most dog experts and vets agree that it is important to spay or neuter a pet canine. This is because the procedure can help to prevent a host of problems. For one, it can reduce cancer risk in your pet and decrease their inclination to flee their home and get into troublesome situations outside. In addition, spaying or neutering is a responsible task to do as it can prevent your dog from breeding and producing litter that could end up in shelters or be rendered homeless. Blood pressure measurement is a very important part of small animal practice. There are numerous indications for its use and a number of different methods available to measure it. The method we're going to demonstrate today is the Doppler method. Here is the equipment required for Doppler blood pressure measurement. You have the ultrasonic Doppler flow detector along with the probe, a sphygmonometer, coupling gel for placing the probe over the artery, a measuring tape for determining cuff size, a selection of cuffs, white tape, and clippers. There are numerous spots from where you can measure blood pressure. One spot would be the metacarpal artery, the metatarsal, the dorsal pedal, and the median coccygeal. All blood pressure measurements um, using indirect methods require the placement of a cuff. Using the correct size cuff is very important. If you use too large a cuff, you'll underestimate the blood pressure if you use too small a cuff, you'll overestimate the blood pressure. One of the first things that we like to do is go ahead and measure to determine the cuff size. In this case, we're actually going to use the dorsal pedal artery to measure the blood pressure. So we're going to go ahead and measure above the tarsal joint. What we are doing is measuring the circumference of the limb in centimeters. The measurement is about 13 centimeters in this dog. What we do is multiply this value by 0.4 to determine the cuff size. So in this case, the measurement comes out at 5.2 centimeters. Therefore, we're selecting a 5 centimeter cuff. If the measurement comes out in between, then it's best to err on the side of the larger cuff to minimize error. Once we've selected our cuff, we're going to go ahead and place it in position. It's usually best to secure this with a piece of white tape to avoid the cuff from popping off. Once the cuff is securely in place, we're going to go ahead and locate the pulse. Once we've located the pulse, we're going to go ahead and shave a small area of fur above that location.
Once we've located a good pulse, we can go ahead and apply the probe. For this, we need to apply coupling gel to the concave surface of the probe. At this point, I'm going to turn the machine on so we can hear the artery pulsating. Sometimes the noise can be distracting to some animals, and you can use headphones to try and minimize the distraction to the animal. I'm now going to move the probe until I can locate the artery. Once we've obtained a good pulse and can hear the, the pulsation of the artery very well, we can go ahead and tape that in place so as to maintain the position. Once you have a good reading on the Doppler and you can hear the sound well, you can go ahead and connect the sphygma manometer. I'm now going to go ahead and inflate the cuff until the sound disappears. About 20 to 30 points past the sound disappearing. I'm then going to slowly release the, the cuff until the sound reappears. This is accomplished by slowly releasing the red button. The point at which the sound returns is the systolic blood pressure. and In this case, was at around about 115 millimeters of mercury. Once we have obtained one reading, we go ahead and repeat the measurement, allowing the dog about 30 seconds between measurements. It's also important to allow the cuff to completely deflate between measurements. Again, we're inflating the cuff past the point where the sound disappears, then slowly deflating it by releasing the red button. At that point, the sound came back at around about 118 millimeters of mercury. We usually repeat this measurement at least five to 10 times to get an average reading. If there are any outliers, it's important to throw these out. It's also important to record all your measurements in the medical record, along with the cuff size used and the place of blood pressure measurement for future reference. The next method of blood pressure measurement we're going to demonstrate is the oscillometric method. This again requires placement of a cuff um, over a major artery. The best places to measure this are basically just below the elbow, above the tarsus, or the tail in the dog. Here is the equipment required for an oscillometric blood pressure measurement. Obviously we have the oscillometric blood pressure machine, a selection of cuffs, a measuring tape for determining cuff size, and some white tape. In this case, we have our patient's sternal, and we're going to go ahead and place the cuff just below the elbow. As before, it's important to measure to determine the correct cuff size. So we're now going to go ahead and measure at the point where we're going to place the cuff. We're going to go ahead and measure the circumference of the limb in centimeters, multiply it by 0.4 to determine our cuff size. Once we've determined our cuff size, we're going to go ahead and place the cuff. It's very important to make sure that there are the hair coat is flat, sometimes wetting the hair down with alcohol or with water can be helpful. It's also important to make sure that the cuff is flat and that there are no rolls in the cuff. The tubing should extend down, proximally down the limb in conjunction with the direction of the artery. Once we have the cuff in place, we're again going to secure it with a small piece of tape. We're then going to go ahead and connect the oscillometric machine. Once everything is connected, we'll go ahead and initiate the readings. It does take a period of time for the oscillometric machine to obtain its readings, but it does manage to obtain systolic, diastolic and mean blood pressures. As you can see, we've been able to record some results. We have the systolic, the diastolic, and the mean arterial pressure. 
As with the Doppler method of measuring blood pressure, it's important to take a number of readings and average those. And again, record all your measurements and also the cuff size and the location of blood pressure measurement in the medical record. In cats, it's sometimes best to actually measure the, the pressure above the elbow and have the tube coming down the cranial lateral aspect so as to be completely over the artery. In these cases, it can help to have the cat in a sitting position with someone extending the elbow out.